الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله and the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance and every distray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the month of Ramadan that we've been blessed to reach is fading. Its days, its nights are numbered. And as we approach the end of the month, again we want to remind ourselves that this is the month of the Qur'an. And we want to continue to look at ayat in the Qur'an that we read or hear often that should inspire us to have hope. <clears throat> hope for the mercy of Allah, for His forgiveness to earn his pleasure to be from the ones he loves. Allah says, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ The month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Qur'an, a guidance for mankind, the clear proofs for that guidance. Allah didn't just leave us blind, there's proof upon proof in the Qur'an for the correct guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. ثم قال الله إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا. Allah says what means verily this Quran it guides to what is most just and what is most right and it gives glad tidings to the believers in Tawheed and the oneness of Allah that we worship Allah alone with our partners and in His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Who work deeds of righteousness that they shall have a great reward, yani paradise, Jannah, will be their abode. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi he told us again as a reminder because Allah told us to remind one another of things. Remind one another because reminding one another, uh, one another benefits the believers. The Prophet ﷺ, he said with respect to this Qur'an, it is Kitab Allah, the Book of Allah, Habl Allah, the Rope of Allah, al mamdud min al-Sama'i al ard This Rope of Allah, this Book of Allah is outstretched from the heavens to the earth. If you had a rope hanging from a helicopter and you're in the middle of the ocean drowning, drowning you would grab onto it with your life so that it could pull you up and save you. This rope of Allah is being outstretched from the heavens to the earth. That the mystical bin so cling to it and hold on to it firmly. Allah says, Hold tightly, cling firmly to the rope of Allah, this book of Allah. And with that comes the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And do not become divided. The groups that are branching off the Qur'an and the Sunnah, they are the ones causing the division, not you by sticking to what Allah revealed. 
and what his messenger وسلم, brought with it. With it. Abshiru. <coughs> So give glad tidings and have glad tidings. لَأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ تَرَفُهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ وَتَرَفُهُ بِيَدِ اللَّهُ وَتَرَفُهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ فَتَنَسَّقُ بِهِ have, have glad tidings. Because this book of Allah, the Qur'an, one end of it is in the hand of Allah, the other end is in your hand, so cling firmly to it. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَن, لَن تَهْلِكُوا وَلَن تَضِرُّ بَعْنُهُ أَبَدًا if you do so, you will never be destroyed and you will never go astray. Uh, the Book of Allah, again, many ayat that show the value of this final message to mankind. Allah says, This book, this is the book, the Quran, of which there is no doubt, a guidance to those who are the muttaqun, who have taqwa, who have piousness, who are righteous, who fear Allah and keep their duty to Allah, and put between themselves and Allah's punishment a barrier by their obedience to Allah and His deen. This book, it has the cures for any diseases or sadnesses or illnesses of the heart. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُ الْقُلُوبُ." Allah says, "What means those who believe in the oneness of Allah and whose hearts find rest with the remembrance of Allah? Indeed, verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find rest." Everything we need is in this book. Allah said, "وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ الْتِبْيَانَ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ." We have sent down this book to you as an explanation for everything. And Allah said, what means, and we did not neglect anything from this book. This is the book of Allah. But whoever turns away from the Qur'an, turns away from the remembrance of Allah. And Allah says, Allah says, what means, but whoever turns away from my reminder, turns away from the Qur'an, never believes in it, doesn't believe in it, doesn't act upon its orders, whoever turns away. Verily, for him is a life of hardship, and we will raise him up, or raise her up blind on the day of resurrection. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this Qur'an is all we need. The guidance that we're searching for, the comfort we're seeking, the peace and the happiness of the soul and the mind and the body that we're looking for, that we're craving, the message for success in this life and the next, it's all present in Allah's final message to all of mankind. Allah gave us gems in His own words to, cure, to heal our hearts, to cure our hearts from diseases and illnesses, to inspire us in times of need, to give us patience in times of hardship. If only we took it and practiced it and implemented it and memorized it, then we would be of those who can never be shaken by what Allah decrees for them. Don't turn away from it, but embrace it and love it. Memorize and learn and implement it and teach it and let it lead you and do not put it behind you. To continue with some ayat, some verses from the book of Allah that we should reflect upon to give us inspiration and hope, comfort in times of need, the knowledge to praise Allah in times of success, Inspirational ayat to remind you to love Allah above everyone and anything else, to believe and trust in Allah and His qadr, His decree, to hope for His mercy despite your level of sin, to remind you of Allah's greatness. Allah SWT says, وَلَا تُمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَ بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ زَهْرَةً حَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنْهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى Allah says what means and strain not your eyes longing for the things that we have given for enjoyment to various groups from the polytheists, the disbelievers and the oneness of Allah the splendor of the life of this world that we may test them thereby but the provision, the good reward in the akhirah, in the next life uh, with your, of your Lord, the reward from your Lord is better and more lasting. We put all our marbles 
energy, time, strength, money into this life being one of happiness when we know that it's temporary. Eternity is Jannah. Jannah is eternity, for eternity, forever, infinity, whatever way you want to look at it. You get there, you're there forever and ever. Yet we're always craving this life. And what are we doing? We're looking, look, this person doesn't pray, he's got an easier life than me. These people disbelieve, they have good jobs, nice families, nice cars, nice... This is what we're always doing, longing for what the other people have. You don't need none of that. It's temporary. Allah created life and death. He did this to test you. To test all of us, to see who's going to be better indeed. Do not long for or crave what you see the people have. It may be destruction for you. If but you only knew. Another ayah that Allah mentions that should give us some contentment. That taqwa, it will keep the soul content. It will comfort the heart. And it increases your status and rank with Allah. Allah says, لَكِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا رَبَّهُمْ لَهُمْ غُرَفٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ غُرْفٌ مَبْنِيَّةٌ تَجْنِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ وَعَبَ اللَّهِ لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ الْمِيْعَاتِ Allah says what means, but those who fear Allah and keep their duty to Allah. This taqwa, this siyam that we're doing, this fasting, wasn't to get thinner, to get healthier, to focus on يعني, something else that would benefit you in this dunya, other than taqwa. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah, He said, fasting is prescribed upon you like it was prescribed upon those before you, so that you may achieve taqwa. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ And Allah loves those who have taqwa. What is this taqwa? It is that you are cautious and weary how you tread your life, how you go in your life. So that you put between yourself and Allah's punishment a barrier. You're obedient to Allah, and if you sin, you race to forgiveness and race to repentance. This is taqwa. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "But those who have taqwa, who fear Him and keep their duty to their Lord, for them are built lofty rooms, one above another, under which rivers flow. This is a promise from Allah: paradise, jannah, and Allah does not fail in His promise." My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, death is never the end of life. And this life is not the real life. It is not the actual life. It is not the forever life. Allah promises those who love Him, who obey Him, who sincerely worship Him, the ultimate prize, the greatest of prizes, to make it to Jannah with all these material things that Allah mentions, because this is what we crave as humans. But then that greater gift, the ladina ahsanul husna wa ziyada, those who do good, Allah will give good. He will give them paradise wa ziyada. He will give them the opportunity to look at His face, to actually see your Lord, to see Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the ziyada, that ultimate reward. And this ties to another ayah that we mentioned previously. وَمَنْ يُعْتَيَ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيْهِينَ وَالصِدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءُ وَالصَّلِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Allah says what means, and whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, then they will be in the company of those whom we bestowed our grace upon them, from them the Prophets. The first to believe, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, all of, the, all of the, the, the first to believe, the martyrs and the righteous ones, what excellent companions these are. Your simple ticket to that, two things, obey Allah and obey His Messenger Have taqwa and gardens of paradise with rivers flowing underneath. And all that you could ever imagine or desire with no sadness, no heartache, no depression, no anxiety, no old age, no illness. Jannah, perfection for you, for eternity, forever. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يُقُولْ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, verily, His command. When Allah, when He intends a thing, He says to it, it's only that He says, Kun, be, fayakun, and it will be. This should comfort you. Allah can change your miserable state in the blink of an eye. Allah can comfort you when you're seeking that comfort. Aid you when you need that aid. Help you when you need the help. Support you when you're looking for support. But you've got to turn to Him. His command, Allah. All He has to say is to me. He doesn't have to call a bunch of people, pay them some money, order a lot of these materials, build these things for us to get some structure of life. For example, Allah just says, Kun. Be. And it, it, be, it will be. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, whenever Allah, Allah wills a thing, and He says, be, it will be. Can you imagine if you're on Allah's favorite list? If Allah loves you. Because you don't just do the fara'id, the basics, you do the nawat, and you do the extra things. From the fasting and the, and the, and the, fasting and the prayers and the charity and the, the hajj and the extra deeds you do. You can reach that level of being special. Because you remember Allah, not just in tough times, not just when you think you need Allah, but you remember Allah even in times of health and happiness and prosperity and the, the money is flowing in and you, you know, you're doing well. You remember Allah in all times, not just when, quote unquote, you need Him because you're in a state of despair. Remember you could be His special ones. In the Hassan Hadith, in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna lillahi ahlina min nas He said to his companions, Allah has special people from mankind, a special group. Once he cares about and loves. Qalu ya Rasulullah, man hum, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are those special people? Faqala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hum ahlul Qur'an, ahlullahi wa khasatahu. He said they are the people of the Qur'an, the people of Allah, his special ones. You can be on Allah's special list, His favorites list. He can change anything with just a word, and it will be. So never despair that Allah cannot help you in any situation. Put your trust in Allah. Allah says, Allah says what means, in Surah Ali Imran, then when you have taken a decision, you've consulted. You don't know which way to go. You pray the istikhara. You consult those who have knowledge or those who care about you and love you, those who are close to you. When you consult them, then when you've taken a decision, put your trust in Allah. Certainly Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. Trust in Allah. Don't think you're in control. Don't think that others are in control. Allah is the master of everything that exists and everyone that exists. This is the key to success in this life and the next. You trust Allah. He feels what, He knows what you're feeling. He knows what you're going through. He knows how difficult of a decision you need to make and He can be there to support you because He knows what you do not know. This is one of the other ayat that we should constantly reflect upon. Perhaps you see something as bad for you, but it's going to be good for you. Perhaps you see something as good for you, but it's going to be bad for you, and Allah knows and you do not know. Put your trust in Allah. He is the master of the universe. He's the master of everything, the creator of everything. Nothing moves on this earth. Not a cloud in the sky, not an ant under a rock, not a leaf from a tree, except Allah knows about it and said it can happen. We need Allah Azza wa His qadr is perfect. You may say, how can it be perfect? I got into an accident. How can it be perfect? This person died. How can it be perfect? I am sick. I got cancer. Whatever it may be, his qadr is perfect. Wallahu ya'na wa antum la ta'amun. Allah knows you don't know. Tawakkalu ala Allah. Put your trust in Allah Azza wa He will not let you down. You don't need to agree with it. You don't need to see it. You don't need to understand it. You don't need to comprehend it. We're humans. We do not have the yoda of the intellect and the wisdom that Allah has. 
but put your trust in the one who created you, that he knows what is best for you. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun sadaheenu bis sabri wa salah, inna allaha ma'a sabirin. Allah says, oh, means, oh you who believe. Again, you want to be a believer, you want to be a mu'min, you want to be the mu'mineen, you want to be you want to be with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then with these ayat, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun, oh you who believe, you got to be all ears, ready to take notes. So you can be successful and implement what's about to come. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun, sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. You want to help yourself? You really want help? You want the support of Allah? Help yourself with patience and with prayer. Truly Allah is with those who are patient. Allah knows life is not easy. Allah knows life is full of hardships. The Prophet ﷺ said, it is these hardships that you go through in this life that, yeah, this is what surrounds Jannah. You want to go to Jannah? You've got to have some difficulty to go through. If you live in an easy life, I'd question how good you are. If your life is that easy and that cake and there's no trials or hardships, you might want to double think how you're living your life. This dunya, this life, is a prison for the believer and it's paradise for the disbeliever. Allah knows everything you're going through, every tear you shed, every heartache you have. Allah knows it very complete, more than you know yourself. Allah has full knowledge of it because He cares you for you and He loves you. If you turn to Him in obedience and you believe in Him and you worship Him alone without partners. And He gave us all of these solutions in the Qur'an from our Prophet ﷺ to confront the difficulties and the trials and the hardships of this dunya. The first we saw mentioned in this verse, help yourself with patience and prayer. Patience is at the first stroke at Tanamani. The prayer five times a day with the reward of fifty for you to turn to your Lord and praise Him and thank Him and worship Him. Bil ihsan, as if you see Him, even though you know that you don't see Him, He sees you and has full knowledge of you. Allah, He said, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ Allah says, I'm closer to you than your own jugular vein. Your jugular vein, stick your finger in your throat. This is your jugular vein. Now Allah, He's above the seven heavens, above His arsh. كَمَا قَالْ الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى الرَّحْمَانُ Allah, the entirely merciful, He ascended above His throne, separate from His creation. This is where Allah is, but His knowledge is everywhere. And He has the malaika recording everything, even though He doesn't need them to record it, He has that as more proof and more proof for our deeds to be recorded. Allah is closer to you than your own jugular vein, ready to help you and support you and aid you and comfort you and console you. But you have to turn to Him, and there's no better way of doing that than through the Book of Allah. أَقُولُ قَدْ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ إِذَا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرَ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستثيه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Quran isn't just for us to يعني read through يعني and say I did it, I got through it. It has to enter the heart. All the problems we have, all the difficulties, the solutions in the Quran. And I remind you, that comes with what Ibn Abbas said, you can never separate from the Qur'an, and that is the Sunnah of the Prophet Obey Allah and obey His Messenger Just a couple more ayat. We reviewed in the last three weeks. Yes, there's the Qisas, there's the stories of the Prophets, the previous nations, Allah affirming what is the truth, etc. And there's other things, about good manners and and, 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 and what is halal, what is haram in the Qur'an, but look at these ayat to comfort you and support you. It should mean nothing else if we believe these are the words of the one who created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْرُلُ التَّوَّةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَأْخُلُ الصَّادِقَاتِ الصَّادِقَاتِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says what means, know they not that Allah accepts the repentance of his slaves. 
come with all the sins in the world. All right? There's no sin too big for Allah to forgive. If you come with a repentant heart, even shit, Allah will forgive it. If you come with tawbah, tawbah and nasuha, the sincere repentance, come to that with Allah. Know you not that Allah accepts the repentance from slaves. The one who repents from a sin is like the one who has no sin. Know you not that Allah accepts the tawbah from his slaves, the repentance from his slaves, and takes the sadaqat. He takes the zakat and the sadaqat, the cherries that you give. He nurtures them in his hand and he grows them for you. We, we, we invest so much in this life, hoping to make a dollar or a hundred or a thousand. And Allah, he takes every sadaqah you give and he nurtures it and grows it and grows it. Like your sadaqat is seeds. Someone can hold them in their hands and they're no benefit. Or they can plant them and then you'll get fruits from them. This is what Allah does with your charities. He nurtures them until He grows them to the size of a mountain. And that Allah alone is the one who forgives and accepts repentance most merciful. It's never too late to return to Allah. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never despair for the mercy of Allah. Tell this to your brothers and your sisters who are staying away from the masajid because of the sins they're committing. Tell it to them because shaitan's winning them over by you're too dirty, you're too filthy, you're committing too many sins, don't go to the masjid. But acts the opposite. They need to be coming here when they're in that state. In the salat that wal munkar, it is the salah that is going to help you distance yourself from fahsha, from this evil conduct and this misdoings, these wrongdoings. No matter how bad or ugly your secrets or your sins, the world doesn't forgive. But Allah, He only he always forgives. The one who created you forgives and He loves to forgive. Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbu al-afu khafu anna. Oh Allah, you are the, for, the forgiver. You are the one who pardons. You love to pardon, you love to forgive. So forgive us. This is the dua we should have on our tongues throughout these last days and nights of Ramadan because this is what to say on the al Qadr. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, "Am hasibtum an tadkhul al-jannata, wa lama yatikum matar al-ladin khalu min qablikum, masatum al-baqsa wa al-dawa wa zulzilu, hatta hatta yaqul al-rasul wa al-ladin ma'ahu, amanu ma'ahu, mata nasr Allah, ala anna nasr Allah qarib." Allah says, "What means? Do you suppose? Do you think that you will enter paradise without trials and suffering, as came to those who passed away before you?" They were afflicted with severe poverty and ailments, misfortunes and hardships. They were so shaken that even the Prophet, the messenger that was with them, and the people who believed, they all said, when will the help of Allah come? Well, when, 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 when will the help of Allah come? Indeed, certainly the help of Allah is near. أَحَسَبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَقُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا أَمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Allah says what means, do you think that you were gonna you were just yani, you were created and you're gonna be left to say I believe and not be tested? These tests are a sign of Allah's love. This is a beauty that only the Muslim can understand. That when Allah tests us and tries us, it is love. Do you think you're gonna earn Jannah without any struggle? Look at when you're studying to just get a degree, to get a piece of paper that says I'm a this or a that. How much struggle you have to do, how much sleep you lose, how much weight you gain or lose, how much stress you go through, just to get a paper to say you've earned this degree. You think you're going to make it to eternal happiness and bliss and peace and security, and you're not going to be tested? This is all part of Allah's plan, my brothers and sisters in Islam. وَاصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُبِيرُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ The last ayah will mention, Allah says, And be patient, for indeed, Allah does not allow the loss, the loss of the reward of those who do good. Allah is not going to jip you. You do good, Allah is going to reward you with good. لَلَّذِينَ أَحْسِنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً Those who do good, Allah will give them good. جَنَّةً وَزِيَادَةً the, the chance to see the face of Allah Azza wa Jalla. من عمل صالحا فلنفسه يدو جود الله سبحانه يجيب يجود 
it's going to benefit you. هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is there any reward for the good you do other than Allah rewarding you with good? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, be patient for indeed Allah will not let the reward of those who do good be lost. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have these ayat and many more. Now we just have to fall into, or we have to not fall into what's going to be mentioned here. When the Prophet ﷺ, he'll say this statement in Umar Qiyam, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا On the day of resurrection, when the Prophet ﷺ will say, O oh my Lord, <coughs> my people, verily, they deserted this Qur'an. They abandoned this book. They had it, they knew it was your words. You gave proofs that this was something miraculous. This was not something يعني, from a person. It was something from you, from the divine, from Allah Azza wa Jal. But they deserted the Qur'an. They didn't learn it. They didn't implement it. They didn't act upon it. They didn't follow it. They didn't teach it. We do not want to fall into that category. So we need to take these ayat, all of them. Know that this is the final message of Allah to all of mankind. And realize that in this book, in this Quran, you have the solution, the hope, the help, the aid for everything. For you to be successful in this life and the next. You don't gotta look somewhere else. You don't need a translator. You don't need Allah physically in front of you. All you need is this Quran, the book of Allah, the rope of Allah, your lifeline, your comfort, your true peace and happiness. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn al Jawzi, he said, if the inhabitants of the Qubur, the graves, were given one wish, they would wish for another day in Ramadan. We don't need to wish for that. Allah has us here. You're living today. You're breathing. You're able to walk or move or roll out of here, however you came in. This is a ni'mah, a blessing from Allah Azza wa You don't have to say, can I go back to this life? Because it won't be allowed. So then we'll go to another statement of Ibn al-Jawzi. He said the horse when it is racing and it sees the finish line, it doesn't slow down. It kicks in all gear. It gets energy from wherever it has to get energy. It amps itself up to finish that race at its best. This is what the horse does. So Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he said, if you didn't start off the race, يعني Ramadan, with this in mind, if you didn't start out well welcoming Ramadan, then perhaps you will be better Tonight, the 27th night, finish the race strong. Cross the finish line. Everything you have in you. You may not get another chance. Put all your effort into it. You can breathe. You have a heart. You have legs. You have your arms. You can see, you can hear. He gave us more than we could ever think for. Even if we didn't sin, we would never be able to take him back. The money is going to go. The health is a matter in your grief. Put the time and the energy into your being. 
Well, why don't you just go to my new Kumara? Save yourself and we're from the hellfire. This is here. He hoards. What does he have for play? This was for us to wake up so that everything we go through here, we will have to go through if we make it to Jen. It's just a pawn of stuff. Everything you have in these last days, give it to Allah. Zakat al fitr al fidya has to be paid before the Eid prayer to make up for any shortcomings in our fasting. <laughs> And to give food to those who need it. So they can enjoy the day very ten to fifteen dollars per person per house. We have to head in Sahur. Sahur here, three forty-five AM for changing the time of it. At least till Monday night. If Eid will be on Wednesday. If Dar will be tomorrow, Saturday. April sixth will have a program here to recite the Quran. And understand the meaning, probably be Surah Al Qamar, Ibn Allah Ta'ala. The sisters only. There's a Eid Bazaar for getting crafts or buying Jalabid and the likes of those things. For sisters and kids, this Sunday from 2 to 5 p.m. in the parking lot. The family night or individual Khatam night. We say individual Khatam night because we didn't do it in Qiyam. But if you finish it, try to finish the Qur'an, of course, with letting it penetrate your heart by Sunday. It's this Sunday, April 7th, will be that family and individual khatam night, inshaAllah. The academy has 38 bulbs left out of the 120, alhamdulillah. This is the last Friday. And it's from Ramadan, and tonight could be the 27th night. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, giving sadaqah on Fridays has a distinct advantage over the rest of the days of the week. And he said, its superiority is to like giving charity in the month of Ramadan versus the other months. So you get double the reward, double bonus today. It's Jum'ah and it's Ramadan. So if you can donate, the brothers are there on your way out with the credit card machines. There are boxes marked for the academy. Please, the ones for the fitran or the fitr, put in the correct box. Eid most likely will be Wednesday, April 10th. Big Leap Dreams parking lot. Bring your prayer rugs. The prayer will be at 8 a.m. Come especially early to park. Every year, it's the hardest thing for me to look back. And everyone's saying, start the salah, start the salah. And I see people walking, women, children, Men trying to catch the prayer. We have to try and keep it. Some people have to go back to work. People want to get on with the day of the Eid. So just try to come a little earlier so you make the salah. If you miss it, you pray it on your own. May Allah accept it from you. The Eid celebration will be at Woodward Park next Friday, the 12th, from 4 to 7.30 p.m., Barbecue, there will be about six jumpers, puppet show, the clown will be there to do the face painting and all those things. We always have a good time there, so we'll try to make next Friday afternoon available for you to join the community in celebration of Eid al Fitr. Allahumma ta'ala wa muslimina 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 إنك لا تسمع قلبا يجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب سادس قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب سادس قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب سادس قلوبا على دينك اللهم اجعلنا من اعتقاء شهر شهر رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من اعتقاء شهر رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من اعتقاء شهر رمضان اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا وسجودنا وركوعنا ودعائنا 
وصدقاتنا يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على عادات وعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم ثبت اقدامهم ونفس قلوبهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا رحم الرحيمين سبحان ربك رب سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين